it's a, it's an honor standing here in front of the fraternity and uh, quite eminent panelists along with me. So uh, today I represent uh, Genso Group and uh, we are into uh, one of the important fields which is uh, gaining importance lately that is O&M, Operation and Maintenance of the Solar Projects. So uh, I'll, I'll share our insights into that. So uh, this is how the flow is going to be. Uh, we are going to discuss a little bit on how the soiling losses and cleaning costs which are directly linked and they take the center stage when we ever discuss o and of a solar project. I'll share a quick case study with you how this uh, correlation has been established. What are the important assumptions which you have to keep in mind and what are the pitfalls that we should avoid while uh, planning the o and for our projects. Uh, monitoring and corrective maintenance is, uh, is it's of prime importance when we talk of uptimes and the looking at the tariffs, how they are falling today, uptime is of utmost importance. So we'll discuss about that also. Other considerations, small bits and pieces which contribute to the cost of OM and eventually built up up to 10 to 15 percent, but generally have a tendency to be ignored while planning for that. We'll look into it. And at the end, we'll try to translate everything into rupees and look how the things convert into the returns. Okay, so uh, as you know that uh, the, the perception that we have in the Indian markets at least uh, one year back was that O&M is all about cleaning of the panels, but it's not that. But yes, that said, it, it takes 30% of the cost and effort in maintaining a plant. So th that's a broad breakup that we have shown that how uh, O&M cost can be broken down. How we compare uh, the, the cleaning cycles, cleaning cycle is something which is the prime metric, the yardstick that people use while signing their o &M contracts. Generally the thumb rule is that people tend to use uh, 24 cleaning cycles, that's roughly two cycles a month or if you factor in the rainy months then some months one cycle and the worst months three cycles. But that's not the case, there is actually no thumb rule, it depends on the project, it depends on the location. It depends on your returns because cleaning is a 30% cost. So how do you arrive at that? So how we try to do is we benchmark in, in a single plant when we take over, uh, we, we establish a, a reference string and that reference string is cleaned every day and then the, the, the strings on the, the rest of the plant is compared against that. What it helps is uh, during the design of the plant, generally you assume a soiling loss, let's say 1.5%, 2%, 2.5%. How is that actually being happening on the ground? How do you make your teams accountable? So this referencing and benchmark method happens. We did that in Punjab uh, and where one module was cleaned on day zero and for 80 days this was compared and the variation was 2.5%. So that is how the soiling loss at that plant was established. Okay, now coming on the uh, cost, how at, at, at a design stage of a project, a major decision that design teams today face is that what kind of cleaning system we have to assume. Should it be robotic? Should it be uh, conventional cleaning with a tractor and water coming in? Do you want to invest in a pipeline infrastructure? Now that's also uh, a, a very scientific method of doing that. Uh, we really look what are the savings. Savings are converted from your tariff and the soiling loss which is uh, reduced from your generation. And based on that, uh, we see what is the cost of cleaning. This red curve which you're seeing is the uh, cost of cleaning here where you're bringing in a tractor and a water tanker and of course hiring a labor and then cleaning it. Then you, when, when you compare that with the uh, blue thing which is your profit lost because of soiling, you'll get an intersection point. You'll get an intersection point which gives you what is the optimum cleaning cycle that you should have. If you clean more than that, you're losing money. If you clean less than that, you're losing profit. Okay, so in this case, when we were doing with a tractor and a cleaning cycle, it was coming to almost touching every month. Means a month cleaning. If you see the second case where a pipeline was there, now if we would have gone by a thumb rule of two cycles per month with a pipeline system, you have invested a little bit more in that. Here you can see that it has exceeded one month. It is roughly around 40 days. Right, so the thing is that you have to have a scientific approach towards it, that what kind of mechanism you want to adopt, what is the scale of your plant, factor it a little bit of local cost during your due diligence and arrive at a scientific conclusion for your project. The other assumptions which impact soiling and cleaning is uh, what is the rainfall frequency. If your rainfall frequency is high, you're gonna, your cleaning cost will be low because your cycles will be low. 
tilt angle tilt angle higher tilt angle the tendency of dust sticking to the panels is lesser right so if you are taking a higher tilt don't assume thumb rule cycles you have some savings to do there tariff per kilowatt right now for example we are maintaining the oldest plants and tariffs there are 15 9, 9 rupees 10 rupees at that plant it makes all the sense to even clean it every week so you have to consciously check how that cycle is arrived upon speed of cleaning soiling losses direct correlation robotics have taken a center stage today a lot of big developers are experimenting there are successful uh, operating plants on the ground but once again it is directly correlated to your tariff and the soiling loss of that area uh, generation limited by inverters capacity sometimes what happens uh, you you know today uh, plants recently being designed are touching 40 percent overloading at that point there is a certain cutoff that inverter will bring in what we uh, what in technical terms we call as uh, clipping losses so are you cleaning the modules when they are actually clipped the power is clipped during the peak time of the day a very rational analysis with that is required while designing your cleaning cycles and of course if you have experimental soiling data from the plant like we told we were benchmarking a string factor that in into your model and then you can have more realistic assumptions okay uh, talking a little bit of monitoring and corrective maintenance uh, when we talk of uptime of a system once again we have a blanket limit okay one time up one percent uptime we want when we talk when you are negotiating a contract with the o &M guy or even if you have your in-house teams uptime is not similar with all the equipment i'll tell you example why uh, blue light, the blue uh, bar which you see is the energy lost and uh, orange bar is the percentage of events if we say that okay there are 10 events which have happened in a solar project that is a percentage so which which component is more prone to get a downtime that in that that component deserves more attention for example inverters energy loss will be very high but the chances the, the events occurring in that with today's inverter technology are little lesser DC side loss will be higher because it's on the generation side but events occurring are more because your spread in the ground is more the speed of execution today when we talk of generally ground faults are happening on the DC side so it deserves more attention uh, interesting case of grid for example your events of the grid might be very high you when you analyze the uh, fault log of your inverter you might see out of frequency grid downtime and all that but that is generally momentarily for example even if, if a grid goes for 10 seconds your inverter will boot and reboot and come into that so the loss the impact on that is lower so the the crux is that you you have to treat each component separately and talk about uptime for each component levels and not at a plant level the the industry standard term uh, uh, two terms which is mtbf mttr uh, that is mean time between failures and mean time to repair as very rightly said here that mtbf is highly dependent on the pv plant quality it depends on your design what kind of systems have you kept have you used conduits are your conduits sealed have you used cable trays properly or just laid the cables so it is highly dependent on the uh, design mean time to repair is how your spare strategy you have figured out while uh, ordering your equipment so spares is also one of the biggest cost so spare strategies highly impact your mttr okay so this is the rate of failure and we see if we talk of a complete equipment cycle there are it is divided into three periods early failure period normal operating and a wear out period and the faults during wear out period is what you actually have to predict this once again varies from equipment to equipment so it's very important while figuring out your o &M strategy you figure out what are the wear out cycle cycle of your breaker cycle of your switch gears cycle of your uh, switch yard equipments okay other considerations uh, when we talk of uh, pr and uptime guarantee these considerations you have to keep in mind whether you are talking o and m within your company within your teams or you are appointing a o and m contractor so any contractor if he he does generally have a tendency to do a due diligence of your plant and if your plant is good they are, they will be ready to give you even pr guarantee and guaranteed uptime which takes away a lot of risk today importance of handover uh, you you all have been in the same industry and you every day you are seeing news that some other equity partner or some other banker is being appointed to and assets are changing hands every day so handover documentation plays a lot of role in that if your drawings as built and everything is in place it adds intangible value to your asset which trickles down during the ultimate deal 
simplest example of transportation how the O&M costing is done for example you're putting a four guys team at O&M site we as O&M contractors if we don't have a place to stay in the plant we'll be renting we'll be renting vehicles we'll be renting houses while at during the time of building the plant that extra room might cost you just 75,000 to 1 lakh rupees but to us it costs 10 percent of the O&M cost so it has to be when we do the pricing when we do the uh, initial budgeting of a project generally O&M costs are not taken into factor the IRRs and the financial models are run based on the capex costs so this precise analysis helps you with that security uh, we have uh, security is another issue and that is one of the uh, tools used by most of the developers to provide local employment but there have been cases where security guards have been colluding with the local population and there have been cases of thefts so we have to look at more robust uh, uh, surveillance systems and uh, uh, if 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 uh, detailed analysis is done between electronic fencing and uh, compared to your normal uh, chain link or uh, concrete one fencing electronic fencing sometimes come out to be cheaper if you look at the size of the project tools ppp uh, ppe and ehs now safety is one big considerations and uh, if you see a lot of assets a uh, lot of uh, foreign companies are coming and they follow their global standards if, uh, in that case your EHS cost really goes high in O&M where your compliance standards are much much stringent and with respect to uh, global levels that is a factor you have to keep while ascertaining your O&M costs plant health diagnosis as I told you that it's very important to keep uh, your uh, a health checkup assignment you can appoint an agency for that while appointing your O&M contractor he will generally do that but even if it's not there we recommend once a year Spares and consumable 100% it's second biggest cost in a O&M project 30% of the O&M cost can go into it and consumables also we tend to ignore the small items silica gel grease paints everything but these also factor in so the, in nutshell what we are trying to say is that how how much depth you go into breaking down your O&M cost really plays a role and small things do add up at the end and while giving out the contract do factor that in and ask your contractor or question your teams internally to put everything to perspective uh, when we talk of returns when you when you're doing your financial modeling you are worried about 0.5 percent 1 percent increase in the IRRs but if you factor in all these th things 1.48 percent we have practically observed increase in IRR if you're following healthy O&M practices so this is what I have to uh, share with you and uh, uh, we I highly recommend that uh, do have a strategy do have a solid strategy and analysis and do that scientifically about OEM of your projects thank you